Hello and welcome to Stolen From Me. I'm Lindsay and with every case I cover, a viewer discretion is advised. Today's case we're looking into is 17-year-old Georgia Williams from Telford in Shropshire. Georgia's father, Steve Williams, recalled the day Georgia was born. It was already way past midnight on the 7th of September 1995 and she wasn't waiting for anyone. Lynette and Steve fell instantly in love with Georgia taking her home to meet her older sister Scarlett. Life was pretty perfect for the family. A few weeks after Georgia was born, Steve had qualified to become a police officer. Time to celebrate was all around him. As time passed, the girls were growing up fast. And throughout their school lives, Georgia didn't really like school until she got to high school. This is where she became more popular and was chosen to become head girl. One of Georgia's friends, Jamie Reynolds, was a quiet lad and Georgia always made him feel welcome and included in her group of friends. Jamie was the same age as Scarlett, Georgia's sister, but he always hung around with Georgia instead. Jamie Reynolds was 23 years old and worked in a local garage. He was described as quiet and somewhat lonely. This is why Georgia, then 17, made an effort to include him in her friendship group. She felt sorry for him and didn't want him to be alone. Being kind to Jamie come natural to Georgia. She was a kind-hearted girl. But to Jamie, he misread the signs and thought Georgia wanted to go out with him, so he asked her out. But Georgia turned him down, saying she didn't want to go out with him, she just wanted to be his friend. But he didn't listen and he sent her text messages asking the same question. And she told him to stop. She said that she didn't see him in that way and she just wanted to be friends with him. Jamie loved photography and wanted to practice taking photographs, so he asked Georgia and her friends to come over to his parents' house for a photo shoot. Georgia agreed to help him. On the 26th of May 2013, it was almost time to get ready and go, and Georgia's family were having a barbecue and she really wanted to stay at home with them, but she felt tired to go and run Jamie's house and helping him, and because her friends were going round, she felt like she had to go. He only lived round the corner so it's not like she had to go far. So she ran up the stairs to get ready for the photo shoot, and as she came back down the stairs, her dad said, Wow, Georgia, you look just like Olivia Newton-John in the film Grease. Georgia smiled as she ran down the stairs in her blue jeans, white shirt and black leather jacket. Georgia said to her family as she headed out of the door that she'd see him later. She would have arrived at Jamie's house at 7.55pm. When she got there, no one was there. She was the first to arrive. She soon found out her friends wasn't even coming. Lynette and Steve had finished a barbecue and it started to get dark. By 10.30, Lynette wondered where Georgia had got to, so she sent her a text message saying, Where are you and what are you doing? Lynette received a text message back saying, I've left James's house, I've gone out with my friends and I'll be back later. Three kisses. But Georgia didn't come home that night. At 6am, her parents sent her another text message saying, Where are you? They didn't receive a text message back till 8am, saying, I stayed with my friends, I'm fine. My battery's almost dead, but I'll be home soon. Monday the 27th, Georgia was still not home. She had planned to go to a music festival with her friends on the Monday, so her parents just presumed she'd already gone there and Lynette had booked Georgia a driving lesson, so she knew she'd definitely be back for the Tuesday. Tuesday the 28th, Georgia didn't turn up for a driving lesson. Her sister and parents reached out to her friends, but none of them had seen her. So Steve called the police. One of his friends and colleagues came round to the house. He then explained that this is completely out of character for his daughter, and her phone battery had died, so he had nowhere contacting her. Georgia had gone out round her friends for a photo shoot around 7.45, and that was the last she was seen. The police soon retraced Georgia's last movements, starting with Jamie, looking into his past. Jamie was not the lonely, quiet man he portrayed to be. In 2008, Jamie received a caution for attempting to strangle a 16-year-old girl. Luckily, the girl managed to get away from him. The police then decided to talk to Jamie, so they went round his family home. He wasn't there. 
so the police decided to knock the door down and conduct a search to see if they could find any evidence of Georgia. It was later discovered that Jamie had not turned up for work and his dad's van was missing also. It wasn't long before the police found the van. It was parked outside a hotel in Glasgow. This is approximately 280 miles away or 450 kilometres away from where Jamie lived in Shropshire. Jamie was inside the hotel, but there was no sign of Georgia. He was taken in for questioning by the police, and he insisted that the last time he saw Georgia was when she left with her friends. Wednesday the 29th. At 5.30am, the police went round to Steve's and Lynette's house to inform them they had taken Jamie in for questioning. As Steve is a police officer himself, he knew the chances of Georgia being okay was dramatically reduced the longer she was away. Steve recalled standing outside the door with his wife, just repeating over and over again, he's killed her, hasn't he? He has, hasn't he? Lynette said, don't say that, Steve. When he replies, he said, he has, Lynette. There's no sign of Georgia, the officers said. Steve ran upstairs and threw up. The police searched Jamie's house thoroughly, while Jamie was refusing to speak while being interviewed. The police found evidence that Georgia was no longer alive. On a memory card the police had found, Jamie had tried to destroy the images, the videos he had recorded the previous night when Georgia was round. The police were able to recover most of the content on the memory card. The family was informed. Steve said the day he found out about Georgia was the day he died. One of Steve's colleagues from work came round to inform them they had found a large amount of images on Jamie's hard drive on his computer. Some was involved in Georgia. The images showed Georgia was alive in some of the photographs. Then, by 8.20, the images became more sinister. It's believed Jamie had murdered Georgia. He had a noose around her neck and kicked her off some kind of box. Taking photographs and videos in compromising positions, Jamie wasn't finished. He then sexually assaulted her deceased body, capturing it on film. Lynette described the way Jamie treated Georgia was like a piece of nothing, when all she ever did was try to help him and make him feel included. The police investigations were well underway at this point. Digging deeper into who Jamie Reynolds really was, they discovered he was a monster in plain sight. The police arrested Jamie for the murder of Georgia Williams. But he wouldn't say where her body was. He refused to speak, showing absolutely no remorse whatsoever. He didn't care. The only thing he cared about was staying in control of the interview, or so he thought he was. The police retraced his last steps before the hotel. He was seen on CCTV at a gas station filling up his dad's van with petrol. It's believed Georgia's body was in the back of that van. When he previously asked Georgia out, he asked to go to the cinema with her. When she declined, he then took her deceased body instead in the back of the van. The 31st of May. Numerous people came forward after seeing an appeal on TV, asking if anyone had seen the van. Some people said that they had seen the van, and a couple actually came forward saying they helped Jamie as his van got stuck. This led the police to an area where the van had gotten stuck, and the police searched the area. This is where they discovered George's naked body, left in a stream in a remote woodland near Wrexham in North Wales. The police charged Jamie with the murder of Georgia Williams, the 4th of June. Police formally confirmed the body that was found is that of Georgia Williams, identifying her by her dental records. A post-mortem examination revealed she died due to pressure applied to her neck. An inquest was open. 
When Steve and Lynette and Scarlett visited the Chapel of Rest to say their goodbyes to Georgia, Steve recalled looking at his daughter laying there and seeing absolutely no peace on her face. Scarlett was waiting outside to say goodbye to her sister, but when her dad came out, he wouldn't let her go in. He said to remember her the way she was and not like this. Scarlett had been struggling with the loss of her sister, and Steve thought that this would break her. Scarlett was heartbroken. She just wanted to say goodbye. In 2008, which I previously stated, he had lured a 16-year-old girl into his house under false pretenses, then overpowered her. He then tried to strangle her, but she luckily escaped. The girl went to the police and Jamie received a caution. This is when the police found out about his unhealthy fascination with adult films and in particular snuff films. From the age of 14 years old, Jamie's parents discovered his unhealthy obsession. They blocked the internet from being able to access any adult films or materials. But sadly, when his parents later went away, he was able to bypass the internet and access all these adult violent films. In the images the police had found after the 16-year-old girl went to the police, none of the people in the images was actually contacted by the police. Also, just before Georgia went missing, Jamie Reynolds had crashed into a lady's car. It's believed she had turned him down and didn't want to go out of him either. But again, mistakes were made by the police and they just put this down to a traffic accident and did nothing. When the police searched his house after Georgia went missing, they found 16,000 plus images of which were classed as very extreme. They also found 70 videos which were classed as extreme and violent adult movies, as well as the images. He'd also wrote stories about people, including his friends, a detailed description of their murder, which Georgia was one of the girls in the story. The photos also included was defaced and they had ropes around their necks. The 14th of June. Georgia's funeral was taking place at All Saints Church in Wellington. It's believed that around 800 people had attended. It included 150 members of the Air Training Corp, where Georgia had been a member for four years. Hundreds of air cadets marched to the church from their headquarters under police escort. Jamie Reynolds appeared in Birmingham Crown Court on the 3rd of October and pleaded not guilty. At first, Lynette and Steve had to sit in court, looking at the man they once knew, but now staring at the monster who killed their daughter, showing absolutely no remorse, and the fact that he actually wanted to go to court and have a trial is unimaginable. December the 2nd, 2013, Lynette sat in court and recalled looking at Jamie Reynolds and seeing him as unrecognisable. She said that he was the smartest he's ever looked. He then changed his plea to guilty. In court, a psychiatrist stated that Jamie was a potential serial killer and classed as very dangerous. The court heard a victim impact statement read by Steve Williams. Williams told Stafford Crown Court that he had cried endlessly over the loss of his truly wonderful daughter. He said words are used like devastated and crushed. They are used to describe the impact such as this. But there is none yet written that can truly convey to others what it is like what it is really like to lose a precious daughter. I'm not ashamed to say I cried endlessly from morning till night. We have been damned by evil to endure the sorrow and misery to the end of our natural lives. We miss the sweet smile, the hugs and kisses and the infectious personality. George's life was needlessly and selfishly taken away and the details of the case will haunt me forever. George's life was taken for a few moments of evil self-gratification. Steve and Lynette heard Georgia had left the house and arrived at Jamie's at 7.55pm. 
it's believed by the photographs that she would have been killed around 8.20. The text messages they received saying that her battery was low and she was with friends and free kisses was Jamie Reynolds trying to deceive them. The 19th of December, Mr Justice Wilkie sentenced Jamie Reynolds to a full life term in prison, never to be released, telling him he had plotted murder for his own sadistic pleasure. You watched her die in circumstances where you could have saved her life. And doing so was the centre part of your pleasure. The judge added, after the killing, you took sexual pleasure in her body, then treated her body with contempt, dumping her in a remote area. He went on, you intended to continue to derive sexual pleasure by photographing these events, keeping them with you. Stephen Lynette was told that in 2008, when he tried to strangle the 16-year-old girl and they found images, none of the girls in the pictures was informed. Everybody felt let down by the police and the agencies. And the boy involved, Jamie Reynolds, was just given a caution over something so violent. Scarlett said life is not the same anymore without her sister. Georgia was described as someone who had a zest for life and was looking forward to a career in the Royal Air Forces. Georgia had wrote a bucket list of all the things she wanted to do when she was 15, just two years before her murder. Numerous people have come forward and fulfilled her dreams for her. The Georgia Williams Charity Trust was set up to help families in need. It has also helped Georgia's own family in their darkest times. The West Mercia police said that they should and could have investigated Jamie Reynolds' previous behaviour and more needed to be done and they will learn by their mistakes. A serious case review examining Jamie Reynolds' previous contact with the police and other agencies and was announced. An independent police complaints commission announced that the Devon and Cornwall police will investigate West Mercia over their previous dealings with Jamie Reynolds. By January 2015, eight West Mercia police staff were served with a misconduct notice over the way the force dealt with the previous attacker, Jamie Reynolds. West Mercia police said they strive to be better and they will learn from their mistakes and they are truly sorry. I hope the police have learned from their mistakes. Thank you all so much for listening to today's episode. Stay safe and take care. Much love, Lindsay.